Welcome to another series of Secrets of My Success. I've invited Kirsten Mueller back onto our series because last time we caught up with her, in her first year of real estate, she made half a million dollars. And if you remember her story, she served in Afghanistan, she came from a hard upbringing, but she set a goal to write 500,000 and she achieved that. So I had a lot of emails and a lot of people saying how inspired they were by her story. And I thought, let's catch up with her and see what she's doing in the first six months of 2013, 2014 financial year. So Kirsten, how's your first six months for this financial year been so far? Yep, so now it's taken, again, an unbelievable turn. Um, my goal, as you know, was to set a million dollars. I wanted to double what I did last year, which again, everyone told me I was a lunatic for and that it was not achievable. So as you know, that's my drive. Um, and now, right now, today, I'm sitting on 5.74, so I'm on target to certainly hit that 1.1 this year. That's amazing. A lot of people are wondering, Kirsten, what does your day look like? Um, so my average day will look like in the mornings. Um, I'll be doing vendor callbacks, um, calling any potential buyers that are looking to put offers down on my properties. And obviously the day is different. Mondays it's always callbacks after the opening on the Saturday. Um, all of my appraisals are always scheduled for the afternoon unless it's urgent and they can't make that. Um, throughout the rest of the day, it's just me connecting with as much as many people as I can. Um, that's what it's all about for me. But most of the time, appointments are always, whether they're private inspections or appraisals, are always in the afternoon. Uh, mornings, like most agents, like, like a lot of their ideal weeks, everyone tries to stick to that ideal week. You know, that's not always possible, so you've just got to be flexible with it. One of the things that I know about strong agents, Kirsten, is, you know, they tend to buy a piece of people's mind in a particular area. I mean, you've done that so well on the Upper North Shore where your name is so synonymous with a lot of people in those areas. What are some of the specific prospecting methods that you use that has helped you develop market share, your brand and your profile? Yeah. Now, I'm still consistent with my letterbox drops. We're still doing them weekly. Um, so that's obviously still keeping my name out there and everyone's still seeing me as the number one person to go to in the area. Um, but as for me really connecting with people, a lot of my business is starting to come through referral. Um, so by achieving results on the properties that I have been and just by keeping that connection and letting them leave with a smile on their face, um, they're certainly referring me on to a lot of people in the area as well. So it's a combination of telemarketing, which we're getting into first thing next year. We're hiring a full-time telemarketer. Um, I've had a telemarketer on with me two days a week at the moment and she's brought, she's brought me four listings so far. Um, she'll generally, on one of those days, get me three or four appraisals. So that's really assisted me in terms of my business. I have to see the return before I decided to take it on in a full-time role. Now that I've seen that, I'll be taking that up a notch next year to a full-time role. Um, I've also got my SMS program, which still goes out. That goes out every time we send, um, every time we sell a property. We send out a text message letting them know the result. Um, even if it's just to send out a Merry Christmas message, we'll send that out to the entire pipeline at the end of this year, and it's just another touch point. We've got the Home Front newsletter, which is incredible. Um, that's been getting a lot of exposure. That's dropped all around the shopping centres in my area, and um, as soon as they come out, that's dropped to every individual door. We actually get people calling us now requesting for the newsletter. So, incredible result from that Home Front newsletter. Fantastic. Mm. I noticed that recently you're starting to try to get a connection with the community and you know one of the things that I do understand is that you can't expect the community to serve you unless you serve the community first. So what are the things that you've been working in the community in your local area to I suppose give back? In the last six months that's when I've really started getting into the community. Before that it was all my focus was just around getting these things and getting the market share. Now that's still there but it's shifted in a way where I really want to help the community. Um, we got involved with a preschool in the area a few months ago and started up a campaign where we were going to be um, giving them our commission in full for one of our properties. We put a big campaign around that and that's still going at the moment uh, but the feedback just off the back of that and people saying that we're not just about selling properties, we're here to do as much as we can within the community as well and give back as much as we can. Um, so that's certainly been a fantastic 
um, achievement so far, just getting into that preschool. We've also gotten into one of the uh, primary schools in the area as well, and we're assisting them in a big way as well. Uh, every property we sell, we're uh, not just through referral, which a lot of agents say to me, they always do it through referral. Um, but I always say back to them, why do they have to give you something for you to give something back? Um, for me, I'm giving them a contribution of $500 out of my commission to the school every listing I get over a six month period. Um, they're going to be uh, getting iPads through the primary school for one of their classes. Um, and it just, you know, once we do that, we'll move into something else, whether it's upgrading, uh, upgrading the play equipment, whatever it may be. I just want to assist them in whatever way that I can. And I want people to see that. And they certainly are. Fantastic. <laughs> when you go to a listing presentation, and you knock on the door and you enter through the home, you go through the lounge room, what's the first thing that you're hoping to achieve? Um, so the biggest thing for me is building rapport with that client as soon as I walk through the door. It's not about looking at their home. I don't want to look at their home yet. It's all about me connecting with them. Um, I want to know their life story. I want to know why they got me through the door to initially begin with. It's nothing about me walking through the property at that stage. I usually like to sit down at that stage at a table or um, at a lounge, wherever it may be, and just connect with them. Know about them, know about their life, know about their situation and why I'm there. Um, the next, the, the funny thing which a lot of my clients tell me is that I have a really, and I don't know why, I for some, whatever reason connect extremely well with the animals. Um, most people that have dogs or whatever it may be, no, no other agents want dogs, want dogs near them. Um, for me, for whatever reason, and they just come over to me and owners are really surprised because their dogs usually don't react to people, but every single dog, whenever I go into their home, they want to sit on my lap, they want me to pat them, they just they love being around me and the owners call me the dog whisperer, which I know sounds quite bizarre, but yeah, it's the name that I've certainly gotten with um, quite a few of my clients, so yeah, it's, it's been incredible. So I mean, they're, they're, they're dogs, they're animals, they're like their children. You need to connect with every single person or thing, whatever it may be, in that home, and they need to see that. Fantastic. The journey gets better and better, uh, Kirsten. I mean, John McGrath and the team at ARIC have asked you to be a guest speaker on the panel in 2014, ARIC. What does it feel like? Are you excited? Yeah, it's surreal still. I still don't believe it. I still have to get my assistant and partner to pinch me every now and again because this still doesn't feel real to me. Uh, the first day I joined real estate and went to McGrath, my first day I was going to Arik in Sydney. Uh, one of my colleagues broke their arm and they couldn't make it so that my um, sales manager and principal gave me her ticket and said, you've got to come along, you've got to see what it's all about because at that stage I still had no idea what real estate was about and it was a really good introduction. When I went to ARIC and I saw some of the speakers up on the stage and I heard some of the stories, we had our sales meeting the next day and they asked me to share something about my experience there. And the one thing I said was, I'm gonna talk on that stage one day. And so now that's become a reality. So for me, it's, it's like a dream come true. And like I said, I still don't believe it. And I probably won't believe it until I'm up on that stage, but um, incredible, absolutely incredible. Kirsten, thanks for coming in today. I know you've got a busy day and a heavy schedule just before Christmas. We'd really enjoy your time once again, and I hope everyone would have taken a little bit away of your inspiring story and part two of it. Thanks for coming and wishing you all the best in 2014. Thank you.